Holy smokes, man. Third time is a charm. It always is. You just gotta stay with me now. We never give up. Yep, it says YouTube is weird tonight. <clears throat> man. I didn't get a notification now. That was rough business. I don't they probably got tired of sending out notifications. <laughs> there it is. Man. We're gonna talk about the worst news. Sounds like they don't even want us to give it to you. Come on. <laughs> Oh my goodness, is everybody doing all right? Let's wait till everybody gets in here. This is a very confusing night for a lot of folks, boy. We missed you guys last week. And we're, uh, I mean, busting hump to get here this week. Oh, everyone's back. Here Yay. they come, just give them a minute. Don't give up on them. We're so glad you made it. Stuck, Looks stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. You guys always hang with us. We'll never let you down. We just had some technical difficulties there. We're back in the RV. We're just leaving the Weston A. Price Foundation's uh, big shindig here in Kansas City. Yep, we just got back, actually. We just got back. It was a wonderful weekend, and then we are, had a, ate a little dinner, and now we're here. Hooray, hooray. We're going to give you that news. we got to wait for everybody to catch up, man. We had to... We had to ditch around a couple corners <laughs> and make sure the real people were here for the live show so we could give you this news because it's not very good. Actually, when I tell you the news, I was going to actually make a video about it, but I thought it was so important I want to tell you right now. And you're not going to like it. Well, I'm not going to like it, and hopefully you're not going to like it. Oh my gosh, y'all, we're getting, we're getting slaughtered. We're already getting slaughtered and it really hasn't even kicked off. There's Wisconsin. Hello, hello. Ohio, Kentucky, Utah, Canada, Texas, and Iowa, and Arkansas, and Mexico. Good stuff right there. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Massachusetts, North Carolina, California, Idaho, the Murphys, Murphys, we're going to see you soon, oh my goodness, Hawaii, Michigan, California, Missouri, Oregon, Florida, Australia, Washington, South Carolina, Louisiana, Alabama, Alabama, Man, y'all are just blowing up these comments where you're from. 3,000 people in the house. We're going to try to get right into it. And here we go. Okay, so if I was going to weaken a country, <laughs> I guess I would try to sneak in some kind of a chemical that would weaken people's hearts so they couldn't fight back. Or maybe have a heart attack or something. And then while I was doing that, I would try to probably be trying to break down the food system, right? Like trying to make sure the people get hungry, right? So I'd probably burn some food processing plants and I'd probably mess some stuff up like that. Also, I'd try to poison their land. So I'd probably definitely try to derail some trains and blow up some factories and uh, stuff like that. I would definitely try to do something like that. And man, if they were really dumb, like if they were really, really silly, I would try to go in and buy their ammunition plants. That's what I would do. I would try to go to their country and I would be like, hey, I'm from the Czech Republic and I'm here to buy one of your biggest ammunition plants in North America it's called Vista Outdoors. And Vista Outdoors is responsible for federal CCI and Remington rounds that we all love for our hunting and self-defense. And they just sold their company for $2 billion to a $2 billion net worth check person company slash crazy train. <laughs> so as ammunitions are already, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to this stuff, but we're back to ammunition stuff again. Ammunition is hard to find. Ammunition is going to get expensive. And ammunition is in high demand. They can barely keep up because, you know, there's all these wars going on. The last president we had, I don't think we had any wars. But, yeah, so there's a big high demand on um, ammunition 
and uh, our largest producer of ammunition just sold all of their factories. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. I don't know about you guys, but man, are we, what is going on with America? What is going on with America? Selling our farmland to the CCP, our ammunition plants to foreign operators. It's crazy, Trey. They said, they definitely said that it would be from within, but they'll use your systems against you. You know what I'm saying? So you guys can look up this story. Uh, I came across it today. I thought it was pretty uh, hardcore. <laughs> Vista Outdoors uh, sold to a Czechoslovakic group, and this one group is led by this fellow. Uh, let me see if I can come up with his name right quick. They think he's a big wheeler dealer. Uh, Jason Vatherbrink. No, that's the guy who was already there. But anyways, there's this one guy leading this thing. And uh, yeah, they straight up only worth $2 billion and gave $1.9 whatever billion for the deal. So they're strapped for cash right now and they just bought our largest manufacturer of ammunition here in America. They manufacture federal CCI and Remington rounds. So that's the hot news off the press. Share it with your friends and the rest of this video because we are wiped out tired because we were speaking today at the Weston Price Wise Traditions. Wise yeah, Traditions, Wise Traditions conference. Uh, conference. Man, it was so good. And we're going to talk about that and we're going to answer your questions. Anything you guys want to ask about living off grid, homesteading, preparing, prepping. Yeah, just put it up what there. What we recommend. Camps. All of our brain energy is done, but I definitely wanted to get that story, and I gave it to you in the first seven minutes of the video. All right? You're so if you're so just good. here for that, hasta la vista. Thanks for stopping by. And of all y'all who are hanging out from here on out, you are the Homestead Homies. Fist bump. Yeah. Met a lot of you cool ones today. Man, did we meet some cool ones today. We did. It was awesome. We've been talking. Talk, 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 talk all day. So. And Stacy talked more than me. I'm just trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't sink into a state of depression. That's what they want. They're trying to keep us in a fight or flight mentality with our bodies because that causes us to get sick. So what you have to do and what we suggest or what I suggest, and we're not doctors and I don't play one on YouTube, but is we're just wanting you to be aware, like awareness, right? For my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So we're trying to give you the knowledge so you can kind of stay ahead of it and just have it on your mind. We don't want you to dwell on it. Like we're operating every day, business as usual, we're here traveling in our RV. We're in Kansas City. And, you know, you just got to kind of operate business as usual. Oh, we're having show and tell, I think. But, you know, when we're traveling now, you know, we're making sure, you know, that we can get home. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> These are some humdingers. I uh, picked this up here at the... Uh, Pick this up at the, uh, man, it's so shiny. At the court days, it's a Henry. It's a 22. It's a great rifle for your boy or your girl. Or for daughter. me. Yeah, I got one for Stacy. Got one for my grandson. We already have one. That's got the octagon barrel, so that's nice. The octagon barrel is a little better because it absorbs the heat better. And they say it offers a little bit more accuracy. But just a little, you know, hey, hey, don't leave home without it, y'all. Times could be like this. Something could happen just bam while you're pumping gas at the gas station right now. Okay, so just make sure you're paying attention um, to all your surroundings and what you got going on. But just live your life every day and keep trying to crush it. Keep trying to ferment and move forward with gardening or buying that land that you want to or, you know, having your family or just whatever. Just keep moving forward, right? Because everything's going to work out for its good. Uh, but we're it, it is going to be a storm like we go through storms in our life and here comes a big storm well margaret says her garlic floats to the top of the honey and can't keep it submerged any advice keep so, flipping it well you you know you can just keep stirring it and stuff after a couple weeks generally it's pretty good and you'll it'll be all right it might stay up at the top for a while and then you'll see little ones start to drop it'll be fine and if whenever you see it just kind of give it a little shake or, you know, but two weeks is your big one. It should get coated pretty good, and it should be fine. Yeah, Lynn Gruen, everyone's still waiting for their book, but now it's at the printer, and her book will be out in six to eight weeks. Or less. Or less. 
I'm not going to open up the pre-sales tonight because I'm too tired and I'll have to catch up when I get home already. But next Sunday night, we'll open up another pre-sale and maybe one more. And all those pre-sale books, they still sign for you guys and then we'll get them out. They'll be the first ones to go out right away when they get in. And then we'll have them for sale all the time at our store. And it's a good book, man. All this healing and stuff with stuff you have around your house. You know, it's how to throw ketchup and mustard on a wound and sew it up with a sausage <laughs> patty. I mean, she really did a good job on it. Over what was it? Over two hundred or one? What do you? No, got? I got to like one ninety eight. A hundred and ninety eight yeah. remedies and healthcare, or whatever. What's it called? Stacy's Home Remedies for Health, Home, and Body. With a smile. With a smile. <laughs> All right. So if you already ordered the book, you're already good to go, and we got you covered, and it'll get to your house, no problem, and then we'll have a couple more pre-sales coming up. Brenda says she wants to know a natural dewormer for chickens, um, uh, diatomaceous earth, you know, it's a good preventative. So a lot of these things, you know, you do, you can even sprinkle some of it in their feed, mix it all in there, and, uh, and then when they eat it, then it'll help them. So you can do that. Make sure they get plenty of water. Um, for things like that, when you supplement, let's say you're going to do like oregano. Like I like to dry oregano and I'll put oregano in feed. Let's say you had a big trash can full of it. You know, it's going to be like 1% or 2% of what your total volume is. You don't put a whole lot in there, you know, just a little bit. But the diatomaceous earth is very fine and very powdery, so be careful. And um, How's your phone? My phone's good. You don't want to, you know, just dump it in there where all the stuff poofs out everywhere. So just be careful when you put it in there. You sure? What, what, do, you, what do you want my phone to do? I don't know. It just seems like I don't have any internet over here. Oh, what am I supposed to put on? Nothing. You're good. Oh, I'm on. Don't touch it. Don't touch this. So anyways, back to this conference. Holy smokes. They were talking about diet, nutrition, talking about... 5G, the harmful effects on your body. Holy smokes, we were just talking about that last week. I had no idea. Some of these folks were there and uh, talking about all this stuff. It was very, very interesting. Uh, they had fermenting. They had, what else did they have? We we wanted to go and take some of these. We could never do we it. Couldn't go, we couldn't go to like, we didn't get to go to one. So, But it, it was, they had really a lot of good stuff. Um, just talking about, you just know, definitely the, the food, GAPS diet, yeah. you know, Natasha, um, McBride was there and it was good. It was, it was excellent. Good. It was good. Excellent. They had so many great So speakers. much information. Dr. Tom Cowan was there. Like-minded um, people. Yep. They did talk a lot and it was, it was really, really good. The food was good. Everything was good. Well, the chat really slowed down. We got them slowing down now. My, made my first batch of ACV. And have a second one in the works. Way to go, Lisa Menendez. Melendez. Oh, Lisa says, after I strain my fire cider, do I need to refrigerate it? No. No. Just put it in your pantry. Let's see. Yeah, what's happening with the emails? Doug sucks. I just, I just, I'm not that good at sending them out. <laughs> I sent out the last one, which I think was the patent. Okay, because I'm telling, hey, y'all, listen to this. So I found some more patents. <laughs> and when I'm looking around for the patents, I keep finding more patents. And I keep finding all these patents that popped up in like 2020, 2021, 2022, and right now, 2023. And all these patents keep dealing with our bodies and inside of our bodies and something that they can use to get inside, to look inside, to, to manipulate, to monitor, Everything is going that way. I'm telling you guys, they are already getting ready to try to unleash this stuff. They already got the patents. They're trying to get the patents about this stuff. It was kind of weird to, to just read some of it. You know what I mean? Like they want to maybe put, you know, like a thing on you and you basically just monitors your heart and all this stuff. And it sounds really good to y'all, but then that's what they're doing. They're biohacking your body. There was other ones about the frequencies, like I read the one about uh, the Rockefellers have one about frequencies. So they're trying to use frequencies to interact with the vaccine. They put it in you, and then they use the frequencies, and they can move it around, right? So that's some of the talk you've already heard, but I actually showed the paperwork. And there's just other weird kind of medical patents that I just found very odd that are coming to surface like right now. 
And also, man, there's another hot news story. We just heard it today. They're, they're, I think they're giving the green light now on suing the pharmaceutical companies because they adulterated the vaccine. And if they adulterated without the knowledge of the federal government, see, this is going to give the federal government an out. But if they can do the uh, prove that they adulterated the vaccine and the federal government didn't know, the federal government will stop it like a hero, right? And you'll be able to sue the companies. That is fresh off the presses as well as North America just sold Vista Outdoors to a Czech guy and company. And they make federal CCI and Remington firearms rounds. And now they're owned by a foreign company. We're having a hard time keeping up with ammunition right now. We got a couple wars going on since this Democrat took office. I thought them Democrats don't like no wars. <laughs> My boys told me I was crazy when I told them that. So those are the two hot stories right there, right? You could possibly be able to sue the pharma companies for your the death of your loved ones or damage to you uh, because of this unadulterated thing. And the federal fire, this, uh, firearms company sold out all their North American manufacturing plants. Now, back to questions. Okay, someone wanted to, you can, yes, you can ferment green tomatoes, they're great. Just, I put them, I quarter them, and then you put them in there. You can put salt, you can put peppercorns in there, you can put garlic in there. You know, whatever you want. If you want to make them spice, you can, and they turn out great. The 1986 law only protects the vaccine companies if they follow the protocol. That means once they get the okay, everything has to be solid, but they adulterated it. Like they put other stuff in it. I can't remember right off the top of my head, right? But it's something we don't think is cool. But they put that in there and that's called adulterated. So, uh, all right, let me see if I can find it right now, okay? My goodness. I give it to you all, y'all. All the way, Jose. Breaking, you can now sue the MNRA COVID vaccine manufacturers for damages to the F and the FDA is required to take the COVID vaccines off the market. Why? Adulteration. The plasmid bioactive contaminant sequences were not pointed out to the regulatory authorities. It considered It's considered adulteration. It ju I just got off the phone. I know people. No, I'm just kidding. I just got off the phone with Professor Brian Bridal and Dr. Robert Malone on this. Dr. Robert Malone's a hitter. Michigan Rimavazir case is very important precedent here. Proving liability shield falls when there is undisclosed contamination of active ingredients. I'm doing a video interview with Brian and Kevin tomorrow on this topic. The FDA is now at a crossroads. Either they admit that they knew about the plasma contamination and failed to disclose it to the public and that the outside committees or that they claim that they didn't know about it, which in case Pfizer is liable. But we have the, this is it, man, the smoking gun right here, right? Y'all, time tells all. Just be patient. It's going to play out. Sometimes you got to go through some bumpy roads. But that's something right there. Who would have ever thunk it? So Helen wants to say, she says, how long shall I expect to burp the gallon jar of apple brandy? Well, Helen, you're not supposed to burp. You never burp it. You don't it's burp supposed that. to be covered up. It's supposed to be covered and you don't do anything to it. So, like, did you put a lid on it? You're supposed to put, I put the plastic wrap over it, put a rubber band, and I stick a book on top of it. So you don't burp it or touch it. You just let it go for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 months, however long. The longer you go, it'll kind of age a little bit more, so... I don't know, man. So that's what's happening right there. Stacy, will Redmond Clay work on the blackheads? They will rip your blackheads right <laughs> off of your face. You will never see those blackheads we again. There was a yeah, we were somewhere. And Tell all your teenage friends. There was a young boy and he had some zits, and so I'm like, here, put some. Of, he's like, really? I put some on your your acne, and then he put it on his blackheads and all that. But it's good for facials for if you're men or women. You can put it on your face, um, acne. And see what you think. Here's and if one thing with the clay, if, if you notice, because it could dry your skin out. So, like, let's say you did it, and then you feel like, oh, I like the way it turned out, and then you do it again. You may only need to do it once a week. Some people might need to do it twice a week. Some people might want to do it once every couple weeks. You know, you've got to have to look at your skin because everyone's different. Y'all, you can get the clay. You can get the books we already have in publication. You can get some tea, the tea balls. Anything that you want to get at our store to help support our channel and the things that we do. Because we don't ask you for stuff, but we do provide 
a product. <laughs> a product. <laughs> All right, and you guys can get some at offgridwithdougandstacy.com at our general store. Oh my goodness. Oh, so back to the thing. What was the what was the what, name some interesting person that you met? How about we do that? Can you name an interesting person that you met? Someone that really just was like, wow. I met a lot of people. Oh, you want to go first? <laughs> Deflection. You know, I, I like, I, I might see, okay, when you guys, if you go out and you go to like these things and you talk to like hundreds of people and you're just talking and talking. So right now my brain is like, <laughs> it's, it's going crazy. So I might can't think very well. Can you think? We met some, we, some really everybody's cool awesome. I love everybody. I love the parents with the kids. Like we met a lot of parents with brand new young babies and stuff. No jabs. They understand fully about all that stuff. And they were just talking about their journey moving forward, like how they were leaving the city and they were moving on to property. Uh, some people were staying where they were, but they were going to start growing food in their yard. I love all that kind of stuff. Love that stuff. I love seeing Maureen. Are you watching Maureen? So she's probably exhausted, probably at the airport or a hotel or something. Yeah, yeah. But we love seeing Maureen. Uh, she's a good friend of ours. She comes to our conference and she really has a heart of servitude. Like she really is trying to help people better their life. And that's what Stacy and I are all about, man. All we want to do is we're just trying to help you guys like get better in your life and, and where you want to get to and how to get there and kind of keep you hip on like this latest stuff going on because it's no joke. There's, there is no conspiracy theorists. The CIA, I mean, if you guys look up this stuff, it's all there for you to find. The CIA is actually the one who come up with the term conspiracy theorists. And it was a way to de de deter people from listening to people that were actually following stuff and voicing kind of what they were seeing. So everything is a front. Did you guys see the community tab? The community tab on our channel right now. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. The community tab is lit. You guys should go check that out. It's right here on YouTube. And I just posted a picture. The... A son of a, uh, all right, let me see if I can find it here. I'm going to try to show it to you right here while I got you watching, see? So if some of y'all can't see it. I tried to show somebody to, son of Hamas leader blows the whistle that they are a globalist PSYOP group, okay? So what he's saying right there is like Hamas is not some Palestinian uprising, generic, organic, hate Israel group. It's saying that, Hamas is a psyop, like they're paid by governments to create chaos, okay? The Palestinian government actually fought against Hamas, if you check out this stuff. I mean, they're not like pals of the Palestinians by any means, okay? So I don't know if you guys are following the narrative on that or whatever, but just, you know, everything has to be approached with a grain of assault right now because the agenda is the reset, Please remember that. The agenda is the reset. So they have to cause a major problem, man, to have a big reset. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So Cheryl says, what's the recommended amount of salt per pint jar of fermented salsa? It seems too salty. Um, you could go, well, are you doing two teaspoons in, in there? If you think that... When, once you have it in there, so like if you eat it right away, it might be a little salty. If it ages a little bit, it might taste better for you. It depends on your tastes, but generally I do in a pint, I'll do two little teaspoons. You can do them very level, and if that's too much, just go a little less, um, you know, like a teaspoon and a half, and it should be, it should be fine. Man, within the first 23 minutes, we dropped some big old nuggets in this place. <laughs> oh, Joseph wants to know any update on the candles. Yeah, no, the cabins. Is the candles? Candles. Or, yeah, and cabins. The cabins I'm having trouble with, y'all. <clears throat> uh, Doug's, you know. <laughs> uh, I can't do it. all these things I'm trying to do at once. I'm trying to sort it. I'm trying to sort it out, okay? So just give me a second. Now, I was talking to my log people, and I was like, can I get some logs and this and that with the logs? And then I get this big story about the logs now. So I'm, I'm working through the logs. I'm working on the help, right? Steve's here now, which is awesome. Him and his family are here. They're awesome. They're helping us out a little bit with stuff I got going on. 
and uh, he's going to help. And then the boys are coming back, and uh, the Murphys are coming. So we're kind of building our team. It's going to take a couple people to put those together, but that's the plan. I seriously am going to have those things for you, so stay with us for the log cabin kits that everybody can afford that will put the those you know, shed houses out of business because it'll be affordable and long lasting and durable and heavy duty. But that's just down the road for me. And I apologize. I was pretty fired up and I was thinking I could get them done this year, at least like one or two. And I just can't do it. <laughs> can't do everything. I just can't, can't do it. Oh, uh, Shepherdess 13 says, have we tried electroculture with copper in your garden? Well, As a matter of fact, we were just talking. <laughs> the Murphys. The Murphys have, yeah, they're having a lot of success with it. So, a um, lot of success. So, you know, just. She saw some definite improvement. But hey, y'all, it makes perfect sense, right? Because everything is electro. It's electricity. Transferring electricity from the ground through the copper up to the plant brings it to the roots better, brings it from the sky better, the storms, everything. It totally makes sense. Just like grounding outside without shoes on walking in the bare grass connecting to the earth i heard a study today on the radio i was listening to a study the guy was saying that people that do grounding it's shown that they have less cardiac events like they have less heart attacks less any kind of cardiac events and if you you know do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around put yourself down Get out and do some grounding, and that can really have some good effects on you with trying to combat that stuff, as well as the other protocols that are going around, probably, that you should look into. Oh, there's Simple Life with Chris and Tara. Hey, hey. Oh, Silly you got the Rabbit. spatula here? What? Is the spatula here? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, do you guys want to see something Come on. cool? I already said it. Where is it? For, for all, oh, what's up? Should be right in the top. The folded front door. Don't, we have to talk about it first. Penul, check it out, man. You got to get on this with a grinder, right? The guy at the uh, court days was taking the cracked cast iron, cast pans. iron pan and just, you know, just need the handle, right? You only want this one piece. And then he cut out a spatula and then he edged it and it's the bomb. It's awesome. The have bomb. you guys seen that? I bought one for Edna, our Amish girl. That we love and her family. She almost started to cry. Oh my she gosh. loved it. And she loved it. I love it. it too. It's heavy duty. With that edge right there, you can be like chop, 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 chop. And it's right out of that cast iron dude. Panul, I better see you making If you guys want to start a little business, you can sell these cast iron <laughs> These spatulas. are legit, man. They're really cool. Recycle, reuse. Most people throw them out, and now you can make the spatulas right out of it. You don't even have to do nothing except grind it and put the edges on it on the sides and the tip. Isn't it cool? Come on, man. That's a money maker right yeah. there, buddy. Everybody's got the cast iron right, but nobody's got the spatula. <laughs> now, I've been thinking about you trying to tell you that, and I got your text the other day, too, by the way, about that information on that cap. But that is legit right there. Too legit to quit. And y'all, I gave a lot of y'all an idea. A lot of people always ask how to make money living off grid and homesteading and all that stuff. Get handy. You know what I mean? That guy's just sitting around looking at these cracked cast iron pans and he's like, well, that's a handle. Uh, that's a, oh boy, a spatula. And he couldn't even keep them at the table. Yeah, no, they, they're totally cool. And he, one place sold them for $40 and another place was like 30 Nope, 25 25 30 this was 25 and the other one I got. I got the deal. It was 40 Yeah. So there you go, man. Oh, Heather says she's got a, a tree full of hard pears. Any suggestions? Just yeah. hang in there. Don't get soft. <laughs> well, no, the hard pears, you, if they're on the tree, you need to take them off because the tree pears ripen off the tree. Um, you can do, like I talk about apple brandy, you pear brandy is the same way. You could do pears and raisins and sugar instead of apples, raisins, and sugar. Um, and then... Uh, I don't know, you could do like uh, pear butter, you know how you make apple butter in a crock pot, you could do that, it would be wonderful. So I would just do that, you could get some if you want to and just cut some up and freeze them. And then you can mash them up later or make, you could make jelly or whatever, but that's probably what I would do. That's what she would do. Give it away. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Hey, speaking of giveaways, <laughs> I've emailed like four of you people uh, on the comments section 
giving away the meter first of all we will never ask you for money do not fall for the scams in the comments section y'all we will never ask you for money i will never redirect you to like telegram or some other social media site youtube is my jam this is where i am okay so we will never ask you for a dime if, if i if i give you a car i load it on a trailer and i deliver it to your door right i don't say hey send me you know $59.99 and I'll get it to you and release your prize or something. So please don't fall for the scams in the comment section. And please check your comments because <laughs> I, I keep trying to give this away. I thought tonight maybe I'll just give it away in the live show, but now I forgot it and it's funner when you have it. So I'm going to try one more time to reach out in the comment section under the video of the meter giveaway and uh, give away the meter because I, you know, I bought it just so I could give it to you guys. I did it on my own accord. You know what I mean? Oh, Bonnie says her fermented sauerkraut is soft, not crunchy. Is it safe to eat? Bonnie, if it smells good, it should be just fine. Sometimes sauerkraut, like I know for me, when it's really hot and it ferments much quicker, um, you know, when I, yeah, it's like 80, 90 degrees in the house, it gets kind of, it gets softer quicker. Or you could have had old cabbage. It gets mushier if you have an older cabbage too. But if it smells good, it's great. The juice is wonderful, and it'll still be fine. We just processed three lambs, and we eat them all the time. Oh, they were so good. The other day, the other day we had, um, I mixed, we had lamb ribs, we had lamb steaks, and lamb chops. We did a little bit of each one. Oh, they were so good. And then Jarvis Mountain Outdoors says, thoughts on bio-optimizer magnesium? Yes, it's fabulous. Wonderful. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, we ship to Canada, except for the stitches. We do not ship the stitches to Canada, and we have more in stock. I had to get caught up on the ones that I couldn't fulfill last time. And when we get back uh, to the thing there, I'll get uh, the count on what I got going on, and then we'll release some more stitches. Y'all, we are getting emails like crazy about how the stitches is working out. Don't be cutting yourself up just to use the stitches and send us an email, please. Please. But it does work, and everyone's calling or you know emailing us and telling us the results on them using the herbal stitches. Okay, Stacy, any recommendations on torn ligaments and tendons? Whew. Well, I would do things that are good, like you know things that are going to be good to promote healing. If you're one that doesn't want to, if you don't have uh, means to get like medicinal things that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I like uh, Dr. Christopher. He has a bone and tissue formula. There's a salve that you can put on it, and then also you're going to take a supplementation. Whenever he's crushed anything, broken anything or anything, I always use that with the protocol because it did help speed up healing tremendously because it helps. You're going to take it internally, helps from the inside out, and then you're going to put the stuff on topically to kind of help it too. Um, you know, if you have comfrey, you can do like a comfrey poultice on there. It works very well. Um, uh, you know, if you're not sure how to do a comfrey poultice, you know, you can look it up and, and you know, it'll explain to how you can do it because they call it knit bone also because it helps to repair bones or, you know, tissue damage and things like that. So, um, that's probably what I would try to do. All right. Check it out. Debbie McLean, you live in Canada and you didn't get your book. Debbie McLean, the book is at the printer, so you can't get your book. So we won't have it for six to eight weeks over here. We got, uh, the cabbage she's trying to do the cabbage and she it keeps overflowing cabbage is very wet already you're probably adding too much brine well, in the beginning go ahead so on the cabbage sometimes when it overflows here's a couple things i always use i like to use chopsticks so when it starts to bubble it may push some of the water up out of the cabbage so you can stick a chopstick in there and then all the water will go and go back in the bottom so you can do that um, and if it already is filled up with liquid, you can dump a little bit of it out. And all you got to do is wipe the top off. Because sometimes you're going to have more liquid in the cabbage. Sometimes you'll have less liquid in the cabbage. Maybe it'll be too warm. It might ferment quicker and bubble up. You know, we can't control everything. So just know that there's nothing wrong. Stuff happens. You're just going to dump it out a little bit and then wipe the rim, clean the top off, put it back on, and just let it keep doing what it's doing. It's really, you're not going to mess it up, really. Okay, Dr. Leo. Is just minding his own business right now. So just give him some space. And when he's ready to not mind his own business right, he'll come back and tell us what's up. So we just love him and pray for him. And we keep him in our thoughts and stuff. I talk to him on the regular. And he's just doing his thing. He's just got some things. Sometimes we just got some things. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, oh, and everyone, Stacy's so excited to see you guys next week. Next weekend. Dang, she's hosting a woman's retreat. It's the Homesteading Life Conference first annual woman's retreat. And that is really going to be a good time. Yeah, we'll be putting it on the internet. We'll put the schedule out soon, won't we? Too, are we? Where is it? I got sure, it. We'll I got it. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll be putting it out pretty soon. <laughs> well, tomorrow we can get it up. Hopefully, yeah. We've been kind of busy this weekend. But yeah, I have it all oh, done. Whenever you got it, I'll get it up. Okay, thank you. Come on. And that is going to be so good. Like, we are going to have a Wow, we're, I'm not really going to be there. You're going to see me popping in, popping out. You know what I mean? But that's not. Well, we're going to have a bonfire on Friday night. Then, so yeah. he has to get that going. And you guys are going to have food. She's been already cooking food from the farm, y'all. We are feeding you food from our farm when you come to this thing. Almost 100 people. Oh, Renee says she made some shampoo bars. They are awesome. ACV, a fourth cup to two cups water for conditioning. Rinse with my hair. It's beautiful. It is. I love it. No ferment has ever caused botulism. And definitely not honey and garlic. Because those are both antibacterial, antibiotical, all that stuff. Canning. Canning is where you get the botulism. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is just for all you guys, just know if you're going to ferment something it, and you go to smell it, and it doesn't smell good, and it just smells gross, it's probably going to be kind of icky. Um, just, you know, smell it. If it's got some kind of stuff on top, you can skim it off, skim some of the vegetables or whatever you're fermenting off, clean it around there, smell it, and it, it still could be good. So just use your nose. Your nose always knows. Oh, there's Carmen. She knows Stacy's food is yummy. Carmen's ate Stacy's food. Carmen. Carmen's going to be at the thing next Yeah, we week. saw her. She was here. Carmen was there today at the... Weston Price thing. Yeah. Oh, and then um, Zeus, the King German Shepherd, says, does walking on gravel count for grounding? Yeah, sure does. It's like a live thing. It counts for pokes in the bottom of your feet. It's good. <laughs> you, you know what? Walking on, like, wood chips and rocks, all those things are good for the foot. Even though you're like, oh, my gosh, it kind of hurts, but just kind of take a few deep breaths and you can do it. Yeah, I'm going to identify as a woman next weekend. I can feel it coming on. It's like a sickness. Oh, stop it. If you want to connect to the lose letter, you go to offgridwithdougandstacy.com and there's going to be a, a, a box right on that home page. There, here, let me shorten this up for you. Just go to this website and when that box pops up, all you got to do is put in your name and your email address, for heaven's sakes. And then I send out information that I run across and, you know, interesting stuff. And it's the best way for us to communicate with you guys because if I put it on the videos, YouTube is already bugging my videos and demonetizing them and shadow banning them, telling me that they're not going to send them out to all the people. And that's why I have to do that stuff, right? So, so Auntie Am says, should we use castor oil on our faces? Well, castor oil is very thick, right? Um, and, you know, for a lot of us, you just got to be careful. Always do a patch test. You know, like you could put a little on your skin to see if it irritates you or anything. The what I use castor oil for my face for is I take off. I use it for me personally. But always, you know, do your research on this stuff. Um, I use it to take off my eye makeup. And it also helps promote hair growth. So if you, a lot of people put it on their eyebrows to help with their eyebrows or on your eyelashes. You know, you could just even put it on your eyelashes. But first, do a little test just to make sure it's okay. But... Yeah, I love castor oil for that. Castor oil is amazing. What do you want to do about magnesium supplement? What kind do you like? We just talked about the optimizer. Optimizer. Yeah, bio optimizer. Magnesium, I really like. We'd we'll be answering your questions and things. Put them in all caps if you really want them uh, answered. Now, I do a pretty good job of uh, finding them. For grounding, can you keep on concrete or do you have to be off the concrete? It's best to be off. Well, no, concrete, concrete, it, is, concrete it, is good. It's best to be off. No, but concrete is considered... It's okay, yeah. but it's best to be off. But concrete, <laughs> if that's all you got, concrete is fine. Right. You don't want anything that's been cured, you know what I mean, that has like the, what is it, the coating or the seal stuff. It. Seal. You don't want to seal. But concrete will be good like that, or you know, of course the best is the grass and the dirt and sand and all that kind of stuff. The ocean, anything do on the grass, when you have the water, it really helps it a lot more. So those are all really good. But, you know, if you have concrete and you don't have anything else, that's going to be okay, too, because that's considered all right. Let's see, brother man, where you at? Uh, Techno CSS. 
If you look in our videos, under every video is our P.O. box. You're welcome to use it. And we take hundreds, multiple hundreds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Magnesium theonate. That's a good one. What I like now is a lot of magnesiums are so many different kinds. So a lot of these things like that bio optimizer, they'll put them all. You know, the, bio, the magnesium theonate, the bio, uh, magnesium uh, malate, magnesium citrate. You know, it has all of them. The glycinate, it'll put a lot of them together. So, and then that way it's very effective. Your daughter stinks even after showers because of what's going on inside. Okay. Does she eat a lot of garlic? <laughs> no, I doubt it. <laughs> well, but it it's also... the food. The food makes you stink when you eat better, and you know what I mean. Like seriously, like we went through the studies. I used to, I could stink up a storm, and that was because of the processed food and all the junk, right? And then as we got purer, like wow, deodorant. I don't even use that stuff anymore. Okay, so it could also be a lot of times. That's the first thing to think about. Well, I bet her daughter is like, is she going between that age of being a young kid to like oh, a preteen teenager? Yeah. When they come to that age, they're going, their hormones and stuff are changing. So sometimes that could be it too. Um, you know, like natural, little, if you got a little apple cider vinegar, diluted it in some water, you know, 50 50, and just kind of wipe off, that could help also too. Rick, we do not recommend grounding pads that you plug in. Just think about it, Rick. <laughs> We heard that today too. It's just like right when you hear it, it just doesn't sound right. Like you're stepping on the plugged in to the outlet pad to do grounding. I'm just not feeling it. Horizontal hives are doing boss. That one, I got one only going right now. I could have split it probably two times. I think it split, but I got a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, the bees don't need you to bother them. They'll be just fine as long as you give them that box. I don't need to go out there, babysit them, poke my face around them. They'll make it through the winter time. I didn't harvest any honey off of them. And I'll get back to beekeeping real hardcore next year and split some hives. And we'll get some other horizontal hives going and get back to all that stuff. And maybe by then, Dr. Leo will be good. And we'll have a good time. Robin says that her husband doesn't like her ketchup. I think it's delicious. Can I add more sugar to it? So, Robin, what you do is you keep the ketchup and you make it how you like it. And then for his, yes, you can add more honey to it. You cannot put the cloves in it or the cinnamon. Or you can do it however you want. Just the big thing is, you know, you, you put that apple cider vinegar in it or you put a little fermentation juice in there and it works out good. But, you know, you can fix it and tweak it how you like it. Kathy, if it took you to the store, that's the same web page. It's just a tab. So just look up there and go back to the home page. <laughs> Uh, so it's so easy, right? You guys don't overthink it, y'all. We got one little web page, and on that page is like four different pages, like chapters in a book, and then you just pick the chapter you want to invest in at the moment, and then that's where you go. But that is on the very front page, the self-preservation box there, because I'm into self-preservation. And then you'll get an email, and I think a lot of people miss the part where when you get the email, you have to hit the blue box saying you confirm that you want to be actually here. And then that actually signs you up. So if you just get the return email and you just see, hey, thanks for signing up or something. And you don't really read that blue box missing the details. Uh, then you're not going to be signed up. And that could be another reason why you're not getting the emails. Oh, I got a good question. Teresa Catherine says... Stacy, what kitchen knives do you recommend? Oh, and they're not here. Oh, I know I have one. Okay, so I have these knives, and if you guys have been watching some of my cooking videos, I use them for everything. This is an old one. I've had it for 25 years. Oh, You've I had it for 25 years? That means it's out of warranty. No, it's got a lifetime guarantee. Oh, I thought it was like 20 years or something. I thought, oh, it is? I don't know. Okay, so have you guys seen these knives before? They're like made for TV. You can cut, you PVC know. PVC pipe. You can cut PVC pipe, bricks, you know, Stacy's turquoise. Meat. 
frozen, frozen kettle, meat. frozen meat, and it and it cuts. I use it for everything. It's got space age technology handle. Well, that's old. So when we were at court days last week, all of a sudden this guy was doing a spiel. Yeah. And and his boss said that we could get all that stuff for twenty nine ninety nine. So I got. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? For I got this? a new one of those knives. So I got two. It was buy one get one free. Then I got a um, like a potato peeler, the kind that's like a razor. I got one of those and a paring knife and a regular like big old knife, chopping knife, and they are so sharp and you don't ever have to sharpen them because I'm so bad about sharpening my knives. How many of you guys are bad about sharpening your knives? So I got those. Dude, what is her name? It's made for TV, those knives. You know, it's like the bread knife, but all the other ones are great too because I use the potato peeler, which is fabulous, and the paring knife because I use a paring knife a lot too and have the time, you know, it gets kind of dull. And so I've tried lots of Yeah, knives. they're not Ginsu knives, but they're kind of like it. No, I think they used to call them Ginsu knives, actually. No. I remember because it yeah, was. Yeah, I know. I don't it think was it the was Ginsu those. knife. Yes, it was. And they would cut that can, and it was like, dang. But I think they got bought out by the next company, and then they'd been having it this whole time, and the later commercials were the changed over company. But I definitely remember the Ginsu knife. But I love them. <laughs> the funny thing is, is when we got, when we, the first time we got our house or something, was that right? The... The realtor guy gave those to their clients. That was the first time we got it. It's crazy. So, but they're the best knives. No, you don't have to shop for that knife. I'm telling you guys. Right <laughs> no, now. I've never, ever, ever, ever shop. I mean, I can cut my finger right off right now if I wanted to. That knife yeah. is so sharp. I'm just telling you, it's the weirdest thing. It is. It's like it, as you use it, it gets sharper. <laughs> what? Why can't I get that on my MTK knives, buddy? What's going on? <laughs> I got a, I'm already dulled out. I just had the conference. You sharpen this knife if you're watching. And now I'm dulled out. Wait until next conference. Because <laughs> you need to sharpen it yourself. Hey, the most one of the most dangerous things you'll ever have is a dull knife. So don't use a dull knife. Are you guys hitting the thumbs up? I'm not paying attention. There's only 4,000 thumbs up. There's 6,000 people in the house. Can you guys help a brother out? And a sister. And his sister, ah, that sounds creepy. Well, that, We're oh, my wife. Well, you know Are we I mean. from Arkansas? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surgical stitches are bothering me. What should I use to heal or help? Her surgery, so she's got some surgical stitches right now, and they must be painful or hurting her. Do you have any suggestions? They're hurting? Um, Suck it up. Buddy. You could put some Manuka honey on there, or, you know... You know, I, I'd probably I wouldn't them. blob it on, but you know. No, I mean, if there's if the stitches are on there and it's healing pretty well. And the third news bomb we're going to drop tonight, which we haven't been able to confirm, and Braggs is strictly denying it. <laughs> so within 47 minutes, we're going to drop the third bomb on you guys. Y'all, supposedly, Kay Perry and her little investor groups have squizzled into bed with Bill Gates and they are bragging about using appeal apples in the Bragg's ACV. Okay? Now, whoa, really, red alert, red alert. Bragg sales are going to crash. So Bragg's gets out ahead of it, and we saw a correspondence that they sent someone at this conference. That's why I love coming to this stuff. And they said, that's not true, but they wordsmithed it. They said, we seek out to use organic, apples because they have to ferment and we need the skin and we would not use no appeal products but you can have appeal on the product and still label it organic from what i'm understanding you can leave a comment if it's wrong but that's another drop right there that who is this bill gates anyways i mean you guys <laughs> we are led to believe that he's a some nerdy kid from school right who came up with Microsoft, which is he stole it, right? And that made him rich. His dad was a multi, multi-millionaire and helped fund and found Planned Parenthood. He was the lawyer for that. So him and Margaret Singer were like <laughs> kissing cousins. And Margaret Singer and Bill Gates and all these people are into eugenics. So if I wanted to have a eugenics party, well, Gosh darn it, I would start a war, wouldn't I? All right. Hello, Doug and Stacy. Hello, Brenda. 
What's good for scars? Rubbing them out. So you can use, there's a, there's quite a few things you can use whenever you have at home. Coconut oil is amazing. You know, just massage it daily. Shea butter. We tell her how to massage it. Okay, I'm going to say what you can use. So, yeah. you know, whatever you have, like shea butter, coconut oil, um, extra virgin olive oil. You know, you can use all those. And then when you're, you're going to kind of massage it out. So imagine, you know, like if you would roll dough out or something, you want to get it smooth. It's the kind of same thing. So where the scars just start massaging it out really well. Also, if you have something in your hurt, the bentonite clay is also helpful, you know, to help with the minerals in it to help relieve the scarring. So you could even, I mean, honestly, if you got some bentonite clay and mixed it in with some coconut oil and put that on, it would make a really nice little mixture and you can just kind of massage it in there. The clay, you're gonna, it might get kind of powdery looking. You're going to maybe need to wipe it off. So you might want to do that maybe at night, and then you can rinse it off and just keep the um, coconut oil on there. But the more you do it, the better it'll get and quicker it'll go away. And then Sherry says, how much is too much fermentation to eat each day? we got to listen to your body. If you're just starting, I would probably start with a tablespoon or two for at a meal. Um, see how you feel. You don't want to get bloaty or anything or gassy because that... That means you're doing maybe a little too much in the beginning. And then as you move on, you can go. You can add it maybe and have it for breakfast and then lunch. And then maybe the next time you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So just see kind of how, how you feel. But you don't want to do like a whole great big jar because I've had people do that before. So you don't want to do that. So just a little bit goes a long way. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, my gosh. We dropped three big bomb news stories on you guys from apple cider vinegar from ammunition to what was that other story we just talked about the apple cider vinegar and yeah the, the and the ammo ammunition and the, i don't remember yeah i mean it's so popping off right now yes bits and i cape can be used internally but we're not going to tell what you. was it <laughs> bits and i clay can oh. be used internally we should talk to a very, man, that guy was really interesting too, right? The Bentonite Clay guy. Do you remember listening to him? I, you, I came after you were that talking. That guy to was on, I mean, fire. man, was, it is so was, good when you get around people that are actually, like, I don't know how to, I don't want to be hurting nobody's feelings. But when you get around people that are actually doing what they say and seeking out more knowledge to get better, it's very... You know, like good, like you feel that energy and that vibe versus when you get around people that are just kind of fronting to kind of, you know, be in the crowd or just kind of, it's just a whole different vibe. You know what I'm saying? You guys got what I'm saying? So Cynthia wants to know what castor oil is good for. Oh, it's good for lots of things. Oh, the ability to sue the big pharma. Boom. That was lit. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Um, so Cynthia wants to know about castor oil. So it's good for like lots of things. Like if you had arthritis pain, a lot of <clears throat> female issues, if you have fibroids or ovary cysts, or if you want to help your cleanse your liver, um, have anything going on that's hurting your stomach, thyroid problems. I mean, you can do it. I said make your, your hair grow. A lot of times you can make a thing, put maybe some rosemary oil in there or, and put it in your scalp, let it set. Rosemary and castor oil are good for the hair. Um, there's lots of lots of different things you can do for castor oil. So um, I, I think I done on, I have talked about it in a live show. There's a company called Queen of the Thrones, and she has wonderful castor oil. Comes in a glass bottle as well as the the packs that are made with the organic cotton, and it's got the straps. You don't have to worry about a mess or anything. Everything is just comes in the kit, and it's just it's wonderful. And she's very colorful. She'll so be warm. So it's very good. <laughs> Oh, so if you get cracks around your fingers and fingernails and stuff, man, get some of that ghee on there, y'all. Ghee is a great skin moisturizer. Tell them, Stacy. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is the ghee works very well for a moisturizer because it absorbs. A lot of times you put stuff on, like coconut oil is good. Sometimes it doesn't absorb. It makes you a little greasier. The ghee goes on greasy, but eventually it will absorb also. The other thing I really do like a lot is shea butter. Um, I love shea butter to death. So that's another one you can kind of rub and massage in there. Almond oil will work. Um, you know, jojoba oil. You know, you can get, get them and just kind of put it in your nails and just rub it in like that. Olive oil will work. 
I mean, you got stuff at the house, I'm sure, that you could use. All those things are great. Just rub them. You can do it on your toes. You can do it on your fingers and just rub it in there. Just first thing in the morning after you brush your teeth or whatever you're doing, or having your cup of coffee, just rub some oil in your fingers. And then you can push it down your cuticles. You know? He doesn't like to do that kind of that stuff. That sounded I have disgusting. To do, I, have, I usually, and it's good. I can just do it to him. Too. Jamie, you're going to get your book in six to eight weeks, darling. <clears throat> just hang in there. We had to write it first, and we didn't want to cheat you. So we had to get it all good. Almost 200 remedies using ketchup and mustard to sew up, stitching, cuts and wounds, and using sausage patties to heal it up. But it's a really good remedy book that Stacy made that a lot of the things you probably have laying around your house. I was being a little facetious. But six to eight weeks and you will have the book in your mailboxes, hopefully. Okay, Kristen says that her daughter has migraines and, and meds given do not work. What can I do for her? Doctors cannot figure out why. Well, look and see what triggers them. Like, is she eating things that are have like MSG, excitotoxin chemicals in the food, like yeast extract and things like that? Um, kind of watch what she's eating because if she's a younger kid, you know, they get into a lot of those chemical laden snacks and chips and all that kind of stuff. So look for that because that does trigger migraines a lot could also be maybe meaning that she's low in potassium possibly I had told her in a live show was it a couple weeks ago that um, a nice little remedy which is simple is you get cream of tartar like a teaspoon of cream of tartar and put it in a cup of water and stir it up and then have them drink it and that could help so you know check it th those things but a lot of times and then migraines can also be triggered by tension or stress or something look at the, those kind of things and it could be very helpful They don't care if you call them in protest. Trust me. Here's the other thing y'all got to realize right quick. <clears throat> you ready? They're bored with money, right? They can print all the money they want. Don't you know? Like, why? seriously, why do you pay taxes? <laughs> they can print the money all day, baby. Why do you pay taxes, see? See, everything's just a mess up. Oh, look, NC says, what do you all think of Essiac Tonic, Ojibwa Cleanse, has burdock root, sheep sorrel, slippery elm, and turkey rhubarb root. Um, you guys all do your research on Essiac tea. If you spell the word Essiac backwards, that is the woman who, um, her, that's her last name, who developed, developed this little protocol. And they do use it in like treating cancer um remember we're not doctors or anything do your do your research on this because um the the native americans also used it for things and um you can get it in a tea just actually <clears throat> i've been talking too much today you can get it in a tea and uh you can use it as a tea a lot of them there's a concentrate you can do in water but I want you guys definitely, you know, do your research on SEACT. It's very interesting. Look at the research and look at the history where it comes from. But it's spelled E S S I A C, and um, it's pretty cool. You'll you'll learn a lot. So go on the internet and look up SEACT because I I like it. All right, let's just play follow the bouncing ball with Doug. <sighs> this is all signaling. Right? So like the electric car thing, they know there's not enough lithium in the world for everyone to drive an electric car. They also know the grid can't power everyone's electric car. They also know it's stupid. McKinley in the 1800s was taken to the hospital in an electric car. There's nothing new under the sun. They put out the electric car mandates. They tell everybody, get into an electric car. They try to puff their chest up and try to tell the auto manufacturers by 2035 or whatever, 2025, you got to have electric cars, right? So all they're doing is signaling to Saudi Arabia <clears throat> and the places where we import oil over there that have already agreed to have the dollar as the standard of transmission for goods, okay? Right? Man, it just makes so much sense. So then the Saudis see that and they're thinking, dang, the U.S. is going to dump oil. They're going to be driving electric cars over there. So we don't need their dollar no more. And then they start over here with China. Yo, what's up, China? What's happening? I know y'all got them factories, yo. We got this oil, and you don't. Don't you guys get it? It's all projecting, just like projecting weakness with our, 
are military men wearing dresses. Okay? Just like them telling stories of girls turning to boys and boys turning to girls. That all projects weakness and it makes the other people think that they're doing the earth a favor by wiping out the infidels. So all that you guys have been living through the last like five years, you know, four and a half, five years, that's all by design. Here's the other news bomb. I'm going to drop it in a second. That's all by design to lead you to where we are right now. And George Floyd died of a drug overdose. They knew it the whole time. And they promoted all that nonsense, paid his family all that stupid money, put that man in jail, ruined his whole life. But it was all a setup. So they could defund the police. And if you guys didn't know, the police are your first line of defense if the HTF hits the fan. Even though they're going to be worried about their own families, most of them are going to hang in there for a minute. So that's your first line of defense that's been gutted. From a lie, again, perpetrated by your government. Someone says, they, I think Doug really enjoys our company. <laughs> I, really, I really do. I just love y'all. Okay. Uh, Hands up, don't shoot. That was bogus too, right in my own town. My mom lived in Ferguson, y'all. And they burned that whole place down, bashed in all the windows, all over a lie. There was never any hands up, don't shoot, never. So just be careful. That's what I'm talking about with Israel and the Palestines, y'all. Just be careful. They're suckering you with the emotions to get the results that they're after. Jill King says, can I ferment cranberries with the same recipe as blueberries? Yes, you sure can. Yep, yep, yep. And then... I'm going to fundamentally change America. I mean, how soon we forget? Dang, y'all. Oh, Heather says the fruit fly was on top of her apple cider vinegar cloth. And Everybody wants it some. And open it. No, they come around there. Yeah. Open it and just stir it. It might have fallen in. Do I need to throw it away? No. no that's protein. No. You, if, go, if, you, if you have the little fruit flies, go in there because they're like, oh, it's like crack cocaine. They jump right in there. You can just go in there and pull it out. And, and don't if worry you can't about find it, it'll be okay. One big, yeah. That's one thing. Uh, Stacy and I, we actually talked about how living dirty has made us healthy. Okay, because y'all, we have been trained. My mom was two showers a day, right? Shower in the morning, shower in the night. We're sterilizing our body out of existence. You have microbiome on your body. Y'all are busting your butts in these gardens to produce this microbiome for your plants. You actually have it on your skin and your hair and your fingers and all over your whole body. And it helps keep you healthy. And if you keep stripping that stuff away... You're going to strip away your healthy. Okay, I just saw Trina's Humble Homestead says, strep throat, question mark. I've tried all my natural things, just wondering what Stacy would recommend. I have not been feeling well, chilling and fever since Friday. So I just love, I love cayenne pepper and salt um, and some warm water. Put a lot of, like a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a little salt and gargle with it. I mean, you can do it, just gargle as long as you can, spit it out, do it like three times. Um... That usually helps. And even, like, I, I have some right over there that I just did because for some reason for me, like, like I kind of got, like, a frog in my throat because when I talk all day, that always helps me a lot. I don't know why, but it does. It just helps. And just in case, let's say, I you know, some germs or bugs or something were trying to get in there, I just do it just to prevent, my, prevent anything. But it, it works for me, the cayenne. But, like, I know a strep throat, if you do it quite a few times a day, it can really knock it out. Um, and try that and see if it helps your throat. But always do your research, remember? Yeah, don't believe anything we say. We don't know what we're talking about. Don't trust us. Oh, and then someone was asking, I saw about a uh, toothache. Cayenne pepper works for a toothache, too. What? You can deal with it. Um, it does. It definitely works very well, too. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people will get a little clove oil, and you can dip it on, you know, on the gum like that. You can also do that. Hey, I'm, I'm going to drop this scripture in the comment section. Let's we'll see if you guys can read it right quick. Boom. How come we forget the back of the book all of a sudden? I don't know. Just a question. Oil pulling is excellent. Oh, I think I saw one. The oil pulling, you know, you do it, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10, you know, whatever you can do. But um, they, they say that the 
if you do with castor oil, you only have to do it like a couple minutes. But I think it's because it's so thick, it really gets in there, and then when it's in your mouth, then it really get into the creases, I guess. So, um, but some people may not be able to tolerate the castor oil maybe as well as the coconut oil, so you just do whatever one. I just have been doing the coconut oil for such a long time, I really do like it. What do you think about black seed oil? I think it's great. I don't, I don't use the black seed oil, but it is very good if you do use it. If you got receding gums, start off with the oil pulling. Tell them how that goes down in case you didn't know. So, yeah, with the receding gums, you mean the oil pulling is very helpful with that. It can help a lot with that, just for your overall mouth health. And also when we were gone, when we were in um, Kentucky, one of the, the Amish boys, he had a sore in his mouth, canker sore, because he kept coming up to me. He's like, what can I do for this? What can I do for that? And uh, it had been bothering him. I said, if you get here, get some coconut oil. I know your mom has some. And so he started switching with it, and he's like, Ooh, I think it feels better. And so the next day it was better and then he did it again. So it was funny. And he's the one that had a little acne and he put that on and it helped him too. So, so there's all those little bitty things that are easy, especially for kids that they can go and do it themselves. And not hey, you guys want to have a little history lesson? Not really a history lesson, but like a, you know, like a, just a quick lesson, right? <laughs> I'm crazy, y'all. I'm just telling you, man, like it's so retarded. Okay. Listen up, all right? Netanyahu, right? Look at look at the camera. Jesus, okay? Jesus, Netanyahu. Now, the pictures that you look at, they say this is Jesus. That's Jesus, right? So when you see Jews, they should kind of be looking like this. Stacy's from the Middle East. She's Armenian. This right here, all this white stuff, right? It's too, it's too white. Yo, <laughs> so Jesus didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes, man. That's a painting made by phonies to usher in some white power. I know it sounds crazy, but I did a lot of homework on this stuff. Go look it up, right? There's no such thing as a blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, y'all. Now you're just like they great come from the Middle East, okay? I'm telling y'all, right? Everything that you think you know is a mess, right? That's for sure. So oh. when you see people talking about that stuff, and I'm putting up these verses saying that the synagogue of Satan are going to be the Jews who lie to you, and then we're seeing like these people come and they're telling us this stuff and we know what's up, scripture is aligning right before your very eyes. You are doing bad things with Did that. I really do it again? Yes, stop it. Oh. Calm down. All right. So, Ricky, what if you... So that was just a quick little lesson right there. Just a very good visual. What if you step in chicken poop <laughs> while you're barefoot, he asks. Well, Ricky, if you step in chicken poop, immediately go and rinse it off. What do you mean immediately? That's what I do. If I step in it, I nah. wipe it off and I wash it off. I keep walking, doing my chores. <laughs> then I'll do the foot drag on the grass. You know what I mean? Like, And then if I'm feeling it's still on there, then I'll go wash it off. I like to wash it off. Just get rid of it as quickly as you can, and it'll be fine. Now, I would I would not be walking barefoot if I had cuts on the bottom of my feet. And then I stuck and chip it. That would not be good. So if I have a cut on the bottom of my foot, I definitely put a big Band-Aid on it. Stop tapping the mouse. I did. I quit. Well, your hand's I on. I stopped. I'm done. Knee bone clicking for about a year now. So that sounds like you got some bone on bone maybe, huh? Well, our, our, what do you think? Well, if it clicks, it just might click. We're not doctors. I mean, yeah. we just try to throw some ideas out your way. <laughs> or maybe some ways you can get better. You know, on a lot of stuff, the, the body, you're like a machine. So, okay, <laughs> should we have an exercise class today? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about, you know, you have some major joints. You know, your shoulders and your hips are ball and socket joints like that, right? You, you know, you have a knee joint, you have an elbow joint. They're very similar. So, a lot of times just you know we go through the same motions day after day after day so it's really good for you just to do like just basic movement so i'll give everybody your little exercise today that you can do we'll start with the shoulders that just could help with range of motion if you have shoulder problems because you know we're sitting here um and you're rounded a lot of times so just if you're here and you go all the way up and you go all the way back see i'm keeping my knuckles up i gotta move up a little bit and then I come back the same way, keeping my knuckles up, and then I go all the way around. And you want to work on that range of motion. You may listen and hear pops and cracks. 
but just go as slow as you need and then use your breath. So as you lift your arm up, you take a nice breath in and then exhale as it brings it down. Inhale and then exhale. Because the problem, a lot of us will rip your shoulder out. Like, let's say you have to reach back like this in the back seat, and you know, and you know, you're still used to being here, and this is not, you know, very flexible. Then you go and tear out your rotator cuff or something. So just working on just common range of motion kind of movements. The same thing with the hips. You know, remember like in the gym class how you put your hands on your hips and you do big hip circles around and around go the other way try to see how round you can make the circle with your hips because you're going to notice a lot of us you're walking every day you're doing a lot of stuff so your hips get gunked up so it's sort of like you need a little double wd-40 in there to kind of get the gunk out so just doing like hip circles and then if you're doing them and you notice your circle maybe go halfway around and then it cuts and you don't get much range of motion on the other side that might be something you need to work on a little bit same thing you know with the with your arms you know same thing, you know, you're here, think about like opening up through the chest and arms, closing and then opening, you know, working the arms and the motions that it can go, you know, forward, back, rotating them. Same thing with the knee, you can like extend it and bend it and extend it and bend it, trying circles, just doing different types of movement like that is very helpful. Um, and here's a really good one for the knees that could help a lot of you guys. There's a guy that I just love, it's the knees over the toes guy. Um, he's got great videos, but he is spot on and he's wonderful talking about walking backwards. So for a lot of you guys that have knee pain, knee problems, walk backwards. So you could get on a treadmill, hold onto the handles and practice walking backwards if you have a treadmill or if you go to the gym. Or if you're going to walk around your neighborhood or something, you can walk backwards up the hills and walk forwards the other way. And if you start doing that and he says after three if two years of walking, you know, like 10 minutes, three times a week, you can regrow and help the knees. If you do it more days a week, it'll happen quicker. But just by doing that over just a, a couple week period, you'll notice a difference. I was having some knee pain and this was a, a couple years ago and I started doing that and walking backwards and it really helped me tremendously. So if you want to learn more about, you know, your knees and just different movements you can do. There's, he's got a few other ones. It's the knees over the toes guy, and he's fabulous. But walking backwards is great. Yeah, I don't use anything on my beard. Stacey might put some. What is that? Shea, I, I, put, I, like, I like shea butter. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Remember that guy we watched? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Yeah, gosh. I use the hair. Do you guys, everyone's like, do you like, why does everyone like my hair they today? They just think your hair is so fabulous. Well, I'll tell you. I'm telling you yesterday, she was like, don't touch my hair. She had it perfect. She had cranked it up at the night. No, what I do is, <laughs> no, so, so, I'm I, gonna tell you no, I think I know how I do it. So what I did, what I did was I got a haircut. That, so maybe that's why it looks better. I got my hair trimmed. And then I French braid it on two sides to let it go down. And that's what makes it curly. So she I got a shower. <laughs> I, yeah, I, my hair is washed. <laughs> I don't wash my hair all the time. So I washed my hair, I got a haircut, and then I fresh braided it and made it curly, and so maybe that's why it looks better today. <laughs> that's it. Man, she was like, don't touch my hair. And I'd be like trying to flick her <laughs> hair and stuff, man. Oh, my God. Well, it's it lasted hey, all day. I, I'm like a little high school kid sometimes. <laughs> We're almost 60 years old, and I will not let this laughter and stuff die, man. We are always, I'm always having fun. How do you get rid of house flies, please? Christine, you have to get those little fly strips that hang down like that. They are the bomb. I buy them in bulk. I love them, and I love to see what you caught when you're done, and then you throw it away. But those work great, great, great. You put them in where you see them mostly come in, or they're hanging out, and you'll get rid of them because we have tons of flies. What? You even got water in your eye. You're laughing over here. Come on. Oh. <laughs> so, no, the stitches don't work on cracked fingers. They just work on cuts and abrasions. Mostly cuts. Well, like, like a cut. Like a cut you think you might need to get stitches for, that's what you pour it on. Or anything lighter, you know, like, she has the pictures, I'm going to do the video, but there was a cut on my finger here after I ran it through the thing, and I packed it on there within a little bit, it was already healing up. And also that molasses, if you guys have the molasses, the black strap molasses, it helps your hair too. Well, that helps with your gray. Yeah, that's what I said. Helps your hair. Yeah, helps with graying hair. I don't eat gummies. What What to do to Not reinstate, even those kind. To reinstate sense of smell after COVID. 
Okay, Chris, I keep talking about cayenne pepper. Try adding cayenne pepper to your food and see if that gives you a little bit more satisfaction when you're eating your food. I know a lot of people, um, that seem to help them. All right, so she's getting the chemo treatments. Oh, I feel so bad. But she wants to know, like, what can she do to help I, combat that? You would also, you'd want to detox. So, you know, look into, you know, a foot bath. You know, I did a, a detoxing, like the bentonite clay seems to work very well um, in a foot bath. So something like that. They, you can also do like a mask. So like if you want to put a paste on the bottom of your foot of the bentonite clay and, um, you know, wrap it for a little bit and then for 10 minutes and then stick your feet in like some warm water um, and have her hang out in there. You can put some bentonite clay in there and have them detox after the chemo treatment. That might help pull some up, uh, chemicals out. So you got to get the uh, black strap molasses, and then you just open it up, and you pour it on your hair. But you got to go. No, in, you don't. You got to go I, in a. She, you got to go in a counterclockwise uh, motion when you do it. <laughs> no, you just take a spoonful, put it in your food or something. I like. To, I like. I love that black strap molasses is phenomenal. Like on a nice piece of toast with some butter. Yeah, just ingesting so it in food. is going to get it to your body. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how you do it. Yeah, black strap molasses is the third boiling uh, when they're making from sorghum. So it's the third boiling. So it's the most mineral rich. So a lot of people who have anemia, you can take um, black strap molasses because it's very high in iron also, but it's very high in minerals. So it's it's wonderful. I, a lot of times I like to put it in lemonade or it's good at flavoring things. Um, but it does help. If you're consistent with taking it, you may notice that your hair is getting darker. What do you think about literal, what do you do for literal laziness? <laughs> Shit. Uh, okay, that could be caused by what you're eating, your diet. Because a lot oh, of times... Oh, is that a thing? I thought they were being funny. Is it called literal laziness? No, it's not. But I'm saying if you're just being... They're being funny, of course. Oh, I thought... Man, you started going in on it. No, I thought, dang, is this like a thing? No, no. <laughs> but a lot of times if you're tired and you don't feel like you're doing anything, it could be... Get off your duff. No, it could be because you're eating a lot of carbo high yes, carbohydrate stuff. Sugar. Or like in the morning you had a very... Like a bunch of pancakes with syrup. That will make you be tired. So start your days with something good, you know, like good protein and good fats to get you going. And if you want to have that, you know, pancake or something or something more carby, you have it, you know, in the middle part of the day. Dang, y'all. 76 minutes. I think we're going to tap out. Only 5,800 thumbs up, 6,000 people watching. <sighs> Adrenal fatigue is real. It is real. That's why you got to stay on point with your intakes. You got to have the proper intakes, y'all. Everything is about the proper intakes. When you're putting processed food and all the bad intakes, we, listen, we're not doctors, but we're human beings. And we've already lived the first half of like our marriage, I guess you would say. Actually, we've lived off grid as a married couple longer than we ever lived on grid. But the first half of our life was the way, you know, Society wanted us to do it, like eat the processed box food, go through the drive throughs go to work all day, stress on the bills, buy the big house, have a couple cars. You know what I'm saying? We tried that, and we were overweight, lethargic, hormone problems, thyroid problems. <laughs> Our whole bodies were out of whack. But we don't notice it really because we're in the slow boil right like you're growing up this way now you hear people 40 50 years old talking about oh that's just part of getting old i'm gonna fall apart it's, it's not you know what i mean so then when we moved out here and we started growing our own food not eating processed foods cooking from scratch no fluoridated chlorinated bloviated water or rain water which is filtered and even now spring water or whatever better water we can get we input it into our bodies the molasses, the honey, the ferments, the kombuchas. You get what I'm saying? We're outside. We we went from a 3,000 square foot house where we're spending all of our time inside with a little postage stamp yard to a little postage stamp house 600 square feet and 11 acres because we're outside all day. See, that's the big trick. You know, back in the day, the houses were small because you were outside. They slowly got the houses bigger to keep you inside. You are building and staying in your own cage, and it's making you sick. Ooh, that was heavy. 
Okay. So all we can do is talk about what's worked for us, our journey along the way, and we share it with you for free, and we try to help you guys out. Um, Savvy wants to says, do you think food issues from oats or wheat are from the fertilizers you use, like glyphosate? Even they do use it in when it to dry it, it even in organic. So um, instead of the grain that's grown, was thinking of trying a small plant of wheat of organic. Any thoughts? So yeah, I mean you can grow your own. I would really look into growing, you know, more ancient grains like spelt, um, einkorn flour, you know, things like that. Uh, but yeah, we have to be so careful with the grains that we're using. I've gotten to the point I used to, you know, do the oatmeal, but I was very good about talking about making sure it's organic but now i really can't we will even, touch it I, yeah i i don't even do oatmeal we anymore. don't need it so and we we tears a hole because it's you know been so bastardized and messed up Wheat is actually every time you eat it tearing a hole in your stomach on the liner like if you can imagine a piece of cheesecloth that cheesecloth is the lining in your esophagus and in your stomach and when you eat the wheat now it actually cuts and tears but that lining, and then that's how you get the leaky gut. So the one thing that you have to look at, which is so important, is how it has been. Because, you know, in history, people used to prepare the grains. They would soak them, yes. sprout them. That makes it good for digestion. So we've gotten lazy over the time. They've hybridized the wheat. It's not like it used to be. Like, I really like einkorn flour. It, it, it's, it's, it's easier. Um, the gloom strains, it's, it's just more natural. It's not so hybridized where the body doesn't know what to do and how to react to it. You know, uh, the flowers of, you know, the Khorasan weed and the spelt flower and the einkorn flower, they're a lot more easier to digest. And especially when you're sprouting them, it just makes it much better. So like if we do any type of flower or anything, I'll definitely do like a sprouted spelt or a sprouted um, a einkorn flower. And that's what we do. But the growing everything yourself definitely is the way to go. So, so the sole is what now? How do you make it again? It's what to what? You can just, you know, for a lot of you guys, it doesn't really have to be so much about measuring. I mean, if you just got a, like a pint jar and just you could put like, you know, two or three tablespoons of, of, of salt in there if you want to and just wait overnight. It's all going to absorb in there. And then you can just take a teaspoon of it in the morning. That'll be fine, you know. It, it it's, doesn't have to be perfect. You know, sometimes I'll put four tablespoons in there, but, you know, it'll absorb in there, and then you'll get, like, a little film at the bottom. And all you do is just kind of pour a little bit and use what is the clear part in the top, and you just put, like, a teaspoon in some water, a cup of water, and then drink that. We drink that in the morning. I put lemon, a fresh lemon in there, and um, he has some, and I have some, and that's what we drink in the morning. Kidney stones. So it's just really important for, you know, a lot of you guys to, a lot of times your body, your liver, and your kidney are your detoxifying organs. So you're eating something possibly that is causing that or you're not getting enough fluids to help filter that through. So the big thing for a lot of people is just to, you know, make sure that you're, you're drinking good. I mean, I really do like apple cider vinegar um, a lot. So, you know, in the morning you can have some apple cider vinegar or maybe before your meals you can have some apple cider vinegar. And we don't know you, but maybe you're drinking too much other stuff other than water. A lot of times people drink a lot of tea or a lot of soda and that causes a buildup of that in your kidneys too. It could cause those stones. A lot of it's calcium. Maybe we've heard of people taking calcium pills thinking that they were doing good for their bones and they were creating huge kidney stones. And the other thing for a lot of people is doing too much D3. Uh, um, vitamin D3 is, is, you know, it's basically a hormone, but it can be very toxic if you just take it. You need to, it needs to be taken with vitamin K2. Um, and it's like also MK2, MK7, um, and you can find those two together because they help. You need magnesium K2 and MK7. You need all those, and they help the body to absorb it properly. So without those things working together, it's hard for you to absorb it better. So being out in the sun is the best way to get vitamin D3. So trying to get out in nature, getting out in the sun is the best thing. But if you are going to supplement, if you are supplementing, check into doing the vitamin um, K2 with the D3 together because you can find them together. So just be aware of that. So do your research on that. Oh, and then um, Jamie, that was sure talking about the... She sprays pure magnesium chloride, Brian, on the feet. It's Optimum Health brand. 
Yeah, when you spray, I, I like the liquid spray. So, like, let's say you have a, a young child who can't sleep. You can get the liquid magnesium because your body absorbs the magnesium much better when it when you have it on your skin. So, like, if you soak your feet or um, in, like, magnesium salts, which is wonderful because you're going to absorb it through your feet, or you spray it on your belly and rub it in. Or, like, if you have a young child, you can spray a little on the bottom of their feet and rub it in. That could help them relax. But it is, it, it is really good. You can use the spray if you don't want to soak your feet. So that's another way you can get magnesium. And that's a wrap. Phew, man. 84 minutes. How do we do it? Well, we gave you some banging news stories. We shared with you some good health info. We talked about the Weston Price Foundation. Go to Weston Price... We'll just do it right now. Yeah, you guys, I always talk about You need to go it. join this. Do you have one of their books handy? Um, let me see. I have some of them. Listen up, y'all. This would be the best $40 you ever spent in your life. Just tell them Doug and Stacy sent you. We do not make a dime off of this. We just care about you. And the information that this foundation provides is not like the Gates Foundation. <laughs> This foundation doesn't smuggle kids, but this foundation is actually working hard, busting hump, trying to get the good news out about your health and everything. They were way ahead of getting rid of good fats for sat, you know, uh, fake fats, chemical fats. They were way ahead on a lot of things. They really deep dive into the COVID vaccine and all this kind of stuff. They are really hardcore out there trying to help. We call it, what's wrong with politically correct nutrition? You know, avoiding saturated fats, limit cholesterol, all those different things like that. Limit, avoid red meat, cut back on eggs, restrict salt. So they, it's, it's wonderful. You'll get all these different pamphlets. You're going to get a shopping guide. Yeah. It's just, they have so it's many so, things. And this then, shopping guide has like all the stores in all of America that you can go and buy good products from. Like every state in America, they have seeked out the stores, like a lot of you were asking for the list. They have you know, found the stores that provide the food that they, like they serve food at this thing. <laughs> and it had to be grown on the farm, no chemicals. They have really high standards and they fed over a thousand people with this stuff. I mean, it's very good stuff. Yeah, and, and, and then you'll get a quarterly magazine that is loaded in articles. You know, like when people used to order magazines, you know, you get a good magazine with articles. I mean, it's wonderful. So in the mail, you'll get this wonderful magazine with the different things. And I just had to renew mine. My membership was up in November, so I renewed mine when I was and there. And check this out, y'all. They have chapters all over the country where you can actually join up and then have little meetings where you can find like-minded people who are on the same journey. And it's the best $40 you'll ever spend, I promise you. Just the first initial thing that they send you for joining Would is worth the $40. Oh, yeah. And then you get everything after that. Yeah. And some of the people that we met were some of the nicest people. I did meet one a-hole, but everyone was such nice people. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody, everybody was just awesome. And, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about it, so... It's definitely worth it. And then the other thing that I like is the little shopping guide. So if you want to know anything about um, any kind of product, it'll give you the brands and how they rate them, if they're good or if they're bad. So anything at the store is like, I don't know, should I get this one? Should I get this one? Should I get this olive oil? Should I not get this one? So it has everything on there, and that's wonderful too. So I, I highly would recommend it. That's Stacy. That's Stacy's ring right there. She was doing the bang to the bang, bang, bang. That's not Doug. That was, I just did you that. You did that like three times. Okay. Sorry. Someone said something? Yeah. I don't want to be in trouble no more. So there you go. I'm leaving the link in the comment section to the Weston A. Pri oh, here I go with the hand signals again. The Weston A. Price Foundation. Go look it up. All you have to do is Google it. I promise you guys, you will not regret it. Stacy and I work really hard to bring you the best information. This right here is some of the best information. Okay? And you might be able to share like a pamphlet with somebody in your family, and they might be like, wow. And maybe that might wake them up. Yeah, they do have a lot of books about soy, about breastfeeding, about raw milk. So a lot of people don't have any clues. So there's a lot of educational things to back up things in these pamphlets. They're wonderful. So 
They're all good. Oh, AJ Lincoln made mushroom ketchup. The best ever. Well, that sounds interesting. All right. <laughs> Karen. You're cute, Karen. Oh, my goodness. But they weren't there 2,000 years ago with Jesus. Huh? Don't you get it? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, all right. Y'all, it is always our pleasure to hook up with you guys on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube. Our number one A social media of choice. So, we're going to wrap it up right now, though, man. Oof, man, we give it all to you guys. We're so tired when we leave these things. Talking to all these people from all over the place, listening to their stories, sharing their stories, hugging us. How they've changed their life. How, I mean, there's bad stories, too. There was a person that sold everything and they moved to some place. Maybe they shouldn't have because it's not conducive with homesteading, really, unless you were really probably good or you got some serious grit. And uh, it's not working out well. They're almost thinking about giving up and selling their land and everything. So, you she's, know. Nope, but she's doing, I, she's, I think she's, she's got it. And even she if she does, yeah. it could be better to move to another place yep. that's more conducive. Yeah, I think so. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, trial, tribulation. That's what we try to save you guys by posting our videos, 1,300 videos of all this lifestyle from the very, very beginning. And YouTube has actually brought back the oldest to newest tab. So if you go to our homepage on YouTube and you click the video tab, you can click oldest to newest and you can watch our first videos way back when just the little bitty cabin was there, before we had the outdoor kitchen, before we had the learning center, before we did a lot of the stuff as we were growing and learning and doing. So that's really cool too, because you can relive like our whole journey through there. And so that's that's the beauty of us documenting our steps. Got anything on the way out? No, I don't actually. <laughs> I'm just just you know, you guys just stay positive. Yes. Do something good for yourself. Yes. Always eat and like, others. Yeah, for definitely. And, you know, and realize what we're all grateful for. You know, it really makes a big deal, you know, in, like they always say, you know, be grateful, you know. But literally, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm grateful for my family. I mean, be grateful that, you know, you saw that beautiful flower or that tree or something in nature or you're just so grateful that, you that you're up, up walking up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it makes a huge difference how you wake up in the morning and when you're laying in bed getting ready to get up. You know, think those good thoughts. Think about that those gratitude type things in the morning because it really does help start your day. And definitely, first thing in the morning, don't look at your phone the first thing. No. <laughs> definitely don't. You know, you just get out there. Get outside within 30 That's minutes. That's what you should do. The first things you're doing is like lemon water, getting outside, putting your feet in the ground with the grass and the dew, just relaxing, you know, maybe smelling your coffee brewing, you know, like stimulating yourself. And then here, the one thing we talked about in our talk today was... Um, every day you need to be uncomfortable. Yes. So meaning, you know, you know, like maybe wash your face with ice cold water or take a cold shower after your hot shower, maybe for 15 seconds or try to get up to 30 seconds or a minute taking the cold shower. Or what other things could you say to make yourself uncomfortable? Just lots of things. Take your shoes off, go barefooted more, right? Maybe do some stretching because that probably makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Do some stretching on your body like your hamstrings because... The closer you start bending over is the closer you are to death. That's what they say. You know, like oh, well, your bad posture. posture. Yeah, the posture, when you start crunching over with the neck and your shoulders and you more and more you go, that means you're closer to closer you are to dying. And maybe, like you said, like if you are a stiff person, maybe start doing some, you know, gentle stretching exercises. Find a YouTube video and start doing some of those because it really makes a difference. Like I was showing you some of those exercises earlier for the shoulder rotation or your hip circles. Or doing some things for your knee or some walking of all, backwards. Some of y'all probably already turned on your heaters in the house. Stacy and I haven't even fired up the wood stove yet. It's been a little bit chilly, but that challenges our body because we're acclimating to the new weather coming in, right? Many of y'all are layers. in your house in a controlled environment. You walk outside to your car and get in that and control the environment. And then you get out of that and walk into your office and control the environment. So you're never really challenged with your body and the environment and you're not... Being uncomfortable. 
So today, my <coughs> uncomfortable thing that I did was, because we're in a little RV park, you know, so they have one of those bouncing pillow things, but it's a flat, it's just like a very flat one. So this morning, really early before we went to the conference, um, I got up and it was probably about 40 degrees out and it, I went out barefooted and I got on that thing and it was freezing cold and my feet were like literally frozen to death and it was kind of wet and I bounced on it a little bit and um, I was pretty cold, but I got that like shock, you know, to my nervous system, which was good. And then I came inside and, and it totally woke me up and I felt great. So it gave me so much energy for the rest of the day. So what did you do uncomfortable today? <laughs> did you? Did you? Today? Uncomfortable today? Well, I guess you might have went out in the morning, too. He went out well, in the I was out in the morning. I walked all downtown and everything with my shoes off. Oh, no, he was so barefoot. So when we first know. got here, uh, I was going to go barefoot. And Stacy said, no, don't go barefoot because we're downtown and at the convention center. And so I put on my boots. Y'all, I have literally not put on my boots because I'm trying to do something here. I'm doing a little study on myself. I was wearing the boots all the time, and then I stopped wearing the boots. Uh, I believe, <laughs> it's crazy me, I believe that socks, listen to this now, just hear me out. I believe that the socks that they make for people are helping you to be sick, right? Because they're cutting off your circulation. See that band right there? That band gets tight on your leg. And then when you take your sock off, do you see the imprint on your skin when you take the sock off? That's choking off your leg. They call your calf your second heart, right? So I've, I'm pretty big on wearing these. So I started really thinking about it. I'm fully committed to this lifestyle, y'all. Stacy and I, we do all this stuff we tell you about. We don't just jive around, okay? So I started taking my sock and I started rolling it down and putting it over the boot. You know what I mean? So I can still have the sock and the boot on. And, you know, it works okay. No problem. It takes the pressure off of there. But I still have my foot inside of that cage, right? And my foot's, you know, it doesn't have the movement that it needs. So I've been barefooted literally every single day, no single shoes or nothing. And wearing um, the Crocs, right, that are really loose. I bought them, she got them a size bigger. And I've been wearing that and my feet feel fantastic. I feel really great, right? My, I feel very grounded or, or foundational, right? And I put those shoes on because she said that, and I wore them to the downtown thing. And man, it was like clunk, clunk, clunk. I felt like I was walking in cinder blocks. And I don't just have like, you know, junky shoes. I mean, these are Red Wings, nice work boots. But they can't, you can't bend the I can't, body. I can't, I can't bend, you know what I mean? And, and I'm just telling you guys, I saw one person inside the building without their shoes on. Bam, I took them off, and I felt great the whole time. Well, you know, the thing... I, the, Zero shoes. Zero really shoes like. are really They good. have boots, and that's what I'm She wants me get to get him. a pair. Yeah. I haven't got them yet. Yeah, and I, they are wonderful because I have the tennis shoes, and I love them. Y'all, the shoes, and they know this stuff, but the shoes are jacking up your spine, your back, your alignment. They got you girls thinking that it's sexy to wear these pump-up high heels where you're up like this in your foot like this. It is so bad for your back and your body. Everything that you see and that they promote, just know that it's to mess you up because <laughs> they need you to be sick and weak and messed up. That's why you guys got to spend all the money to find gurus and find workout people and stuff, right? Because the general stuff is all to make you weak and to shorten your lifespan. And on that note, that's it. That's all we got for you guys. Yeah, the shoes are terrible. So try to get some better shoes if you can. Yeah, I do like the zero shoes. X E R O. Yeah, moccasins are good. That's very natural, very loose Just, fitting. You know what I do for me? Like I like, you know, the big fuzzy boots. I get shoes, you know, that have a big toe box, or I'll get a size bigger, and I wear toe spreaders. Should I show before we go, let me show oh, you. Oh, can on you a minute. smell them? No, you can kind of smell them. <laughs> Oh my goodness, y'all. All right, she's going to tell you the show. show I'll, the toe I'll show you all my secrets. If you guys, if you do all these little things, like all these little things make you happy. <laughs> and you know what I mean? When you don't do them, you get not happy and sickly. So she, she has problems with her feet that we don't go see doctors for. We're naturally working them out and it's working. Tell them. Oh yeah. So like my feet, I feel like I'm not right unless my feet are like toes are splayed and I kind of had bunions and stuff. So I get these little toe spreader things. They're silicone and you just put them between your toes and then you can put your shoes, like my boots. I wear like fuzzy boots sometimes in the winter, but they're big. So I get like a 
much bigger shoe than I would normally weigh. And then my toes are spread and I can wear these in my shoes. And then the zero shoes that I like to get, the tennis shoes, they're very wide toe box. So if I want to, I can even wear these in them also. And she wears so those just me. sitting around the house. I work or out she's in doing these. The, yeah. yeah. No, I love them. Because it feel, keeps your toes open. Yeah, the way your feet are supposed to be. Because if you're in a shoe all day, then when you take your shoe off, your foot's like that. Yeah. So if you have those, it's going to splay it and you'll notice like, wow, that does feel good. So this is, it's YB, I forgot what they're called. YB, you can say like yoga toes or something. I don't know, but they're like little silicone toe things. But these have saved my life. I really like these. Dang, y'all, from head to toe, we got to go. We gave it to you all tonight. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, see you guys possibly if you're coming to the Women's Retreat. It's the Homesteading Life Conference. If you go to homesteadinglifeconference.com, you can stay informed there. But it's the Homesteading Life Conference first annual Women's Retreat. And Stacy's hosting it. We're going to have a great time. Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next live show or somewhere out there. See you later. you never know when we're going to show up. <laughs> subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed.